This program is rated G and is suitable for general audiences. Previously on Great Chocolate Showdown. Ah, oh, come on, chocolate. Nine home bakers channeled their creativity to make decadent chocolate impressions. But it was Raphael's homegrown churros that really charmed the judges. You made it. Fine dining. I can't stop smiling. And the elimination challenge, Sabby's mirrored glazed brownie was a reflection of perfection. Your plate is stunning. As she claimed top dessert, leaving Tam, Richard, and Atika facing elimination. In the end, Richard's unset curd was his undoing. So you ran into some trouble. Yes, I did. And it sent him home. Now eight home bakers remain. Oh! Ooh. As they vie for the great chocolate showdown title. In the last challenge, I was in the bottom three. I did not like being in the bottom three. I want to prove to the judges that I deserve to be here. I keep getting the same feedback. Good flavors, but work on the appearance. I've got to pull up my socks or I'm going home. Hello, bakers! Hi. Are you excited to get started? Yes! yes. That's amazing, because when you're excited, we're excited. It's time for your next technique test. In this technique test, you'll be mastering the art of galaxy mirror glaze. Oh. I'm going to show you how to make a glaze that adds shimmering gloss and makes your desserts look out of this world. Start by boiling water with condensed milk and sugar. Pour it on top of the gelatin and white chocolate, and then use an immersion blender to combine it until it's smooth. Getting the galaxy effect is where the fun is at. We want to see intense colors from you and a great mix of them. A key to success is to make sure that cake is ice cold. That way the glaze will grip onto the cake the way you hope it will. And this is it. <laughs> Once you start pouring, you can't stop. Chef Anna makes it look so easy. You just have to go in with confidence. With one or two swishes of your spatula, create a direction of these swirls as you wish. And we're not done yet. Using liquid luster dust, we can easily add some stars. By taking your liquid luster and adding a bit of vodka creates an altogether different effect. Chef Anna is showing us a lot of different techniques. It's getting my creative juices flowing. Consider using this glaze while it's still at the right temperature to decorate your accents and garnishes. And there you have it, an absolutely scrumptious galaxy mirror glaze cake. I just can't wait to see what you're going to make. Bakers, you've just learned how to make an out of this world galaxy mirror glaze cake. But in this technique test, you won't have to carry the weight of the galaxy alone. <laughs> that's right. You'll be working in pairs. Oh, that's good. I'm so excited that this is a team challenge. You will each choose a chocolate bar. The color will determine who you'll be paired with. Atika, please come up and choose a chocolate bar. I got light pink. <laughs> Ginny. Light pink. Ginny has years of cake making experience. I am super relieved. Jajar. Ooh, yellow. Sheldon. I think. Latisse. Teal. Savvy. Hot pink. <laughs> <laughs> Savvy has experience with mirror glaze. Let's get it, Savvy. Tam. It's Sajar. He and I are both creative people. I'm feeling great. So that means, Raphael, you'll be working with Latisse. I'm really excited to work with Latisse. She's great in making cakes, and this is something that is my weakness. OK, bakers, you must create a galaxy mirror glaze cake that takes us on a cosmic adventure. Each cake must be complete with a colorful pattern sponge on the inside and decorated with planets, moons, and stars. The team who presents the most dazzling dessert will be granted sweet safety. 
and will not have to bake in the upcoming chocolate elimination challenge. I would love to have sweet safety in this challenge. Haven't had it yet. You'll have two and a half hours to create your cakes. Ready, steady, get your sweet on. <laughs> Okay, flavors, four colors. Blue, green, and white. Green and white. Let's go like like the sun. Okay. So mm -hmm. it'll be four layers, separate colors the okay. whole way. This is going to be one solid cake, right? You know, there's not going to be any layers. No layers. And then right up here, we do this um, sun. sun. Exactly. Sun. Here we are, the very first team challenge, and it is a big ask. Okay, I think that should be it. Just like a professional kitchen, communication is key. Absolutely. Jajar, what are you working on? I'm just about to start creaming my butter and sugar. I'm so excited Tam is my partner because Tam is amazing with flavor. This mango smells so sweet. Yeah, she's really calm. You need yellow Swiss meringue? I'll make you yellow Swiss meringue. No, you, you don't worry about it. He loves to communicate. I think I helped bring Jajar back down to earth. You want bold red, bold right. yellow, right? Yes. For this technique test, we are making the sun as a focal point with a sunburst mango mint cake with layers of a vanilla cake colored to match the vibrancy of the sun. Jajar is working on the cake. I'm starting on the mango mint compote for the inside of our cake. It's gonna be so yummy. The first thing you have to do is get that cake baked, get it cooling so you can start your assembly. Open the door for me, Tam, please. Time management is so critical. Absolutely. Us. Gotta get this cake in the oven. Ralph, I'm gonna want you to come taste this and tell me if you can taste the mint. For this technique test, we're making a mint caramel earth cake. Can you taste mint? Yeah. Okay. Our concept for the cake is how outer space sees Earth. Raphael, what are you starting on? And I'm toasting some almonds for caramel. I'm working on the caramel and the filling. This is my mint flavored cake. Going to be delicious. In the oven. Okay, Sabi, what are you starting with? I'm starting with the buttercream. Okay. Sheldon is easygoing, but he's very serious in the kitchen. We're a good pair. I should pour it just in here, mm -hmm. right? And then we're gonna add some red to it. We are making a solar flare strawberry banana and chocolate cake. For this technique test, we want to look at the sun being the center of our solar system. I really, really want sweet safety. Oh, it looks like the sun! <laughs> I love, I love, I love. Jeannie has more than 50 years of experience baking cakes, and I trust her with that. Our game plan is for Ginny to concentrate on the cake, and then I will concentrate on the aesthetics of the cake. I'm gonna make a simple shortbread biscuit for our decor. For this technique test, we are making an interior view of a meteor with a white chocolate cake. What better way to represent heat than cayenne? This is our secret ingredient. My vision for the cake is to have a core radiating out in other colors. Yellow and then orange. I think the easiest way to get this is to do it all in one pan. Their timing, I'm a little concerned because a cake of that size takes longer to bake, mm -hmm. longer to cool, and yeah. you need that chilled cake for that glaze to really look good. Yes, cakes are like three minutes out. Okay, cool. Oh my God, one and a half hours left. I'm just putting my heavy cream on the chocolate to make my ganache. Rap knows what he's doing. I just gotta let him do what he do. I'm making a mint chocolate chip American buttercream icing. And it's a mint flavor. It's sweet, but I'm doing something reliable because I have to get this cake iced for the mirror glaze. If we fail the technique test, I will feel like I let Raph down. A little more mint. I am working on the planets. Cake's looking good, Tam. To make a perfect cake, you need even layers of cake with filling, where you're doing a white buttercream, a dark chocolate mousse, and a bright core with the mango mint compote. It's good. Looks That's great. Good. Yep. Can we quickly yep, yep, yep. coat it and throw it in the okay. freezer? Bakers! One hour left on the clock. It looks so pretty. The colors are coming together and it's looking really good. I'm in love. It's beautiful. We need to get this cake done. Yes. 
my mint chocolate chip American buttercream turns out perfect. Get the cased ice and in the freezer. Woo! I am tempering dark chocolate to make my chocolate garnishes. How's your cake? Not quite done yet. Now I'm feeling worried. I did not see the big cake that Ginny put in the oven. But now, I see that the cake is in a cake pan this tall. This cake is not going to bake in time. Judges, there are 45 minutes left, and Ginny and Atika's cake is still in the oven. Still wet in the middle. The cake is still very much raw, and I'm very nervous. Judges, there are 45 minutes left, and Ginny and Atika's cake is still in the oven. If we don't have the cake on the plate, there's nothing to show our mirror glaze technique. Do you think at least the bottom layer of your cake is cooked? I think the bottom is. Do you want to try and take it out? We can do that. We decide that the cake is done enough, and we are going to cut off the burnt bits and get it in the blast chip. Let me start the mirror glaze. I can do the mirror glaze if you want. You've done it once before. Yeah. We're asking our bakers to make a galaxy mirror glaze cake. The final frontier. Pedal to the metal. The mirror glaze is ready. It's time to start coloring it. Red, yellow, and black, which is the sun. I think that's good enough. Okay. Atika, I'm just mixing up the mirror glaze. Okay. Go! What? Too much. Too much. Just, no, like, it's better to <laughs> add than to remove. Time is running out. We need to start mirror glazing. I'm interested to see who will be allowed to pour in each team. No, from the top? The, yeah. Okay, Sheldon, you ready? I love it. This glow, it's beautiful. It's looking amazing. Gravity is doing its thing. The colors we are using it, it's blue, green, and white to represent the Earth. It's super nerve-wracking. I'm feeling very nervous. Do you gotta get the sides? Yep. There's only one chance with the mirror glaze. Doesn't give me sun vibes. I want the cake to look like the sun. Lots of red and yellow. Oh, I like that. But then the sides are uneven, so I think we need to do more. If this doesn't work, we're baking in the elimination challenge. I need you here for emotional support. You're good. Yes, 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 yes. Come this way a little bit. It looks like the sun. Yeah, we're good. Yes. This finally looks like the sun. You're having fun. Bakers! 15 minutes left! We gotta do this now. Pull the cake out of the freezer. It's still quite warm, but we decide to slap some ganache on there. Try to get this in the chiller, because it has to be cold before we can pour anything on it. I am frustrated because I've done all the components for the decor, and all she had to do was get the cake baked. I thought it would take an hour to bake. I thought wrong. <laughs> Remember, less is more, less is more. OK, we got to get some stars and moons and planets and stuff on here. Gold meteors. Ooh, love it. Bakers, five minutes left on the clock. These are your finishing touches. Let's go. We're both desperately trying to save this cake. This is all hands on deck. I'm putting whatever that I need to onto the cake. Chum, that looks amazing. I want to redeem myself and get all of these design elements on this cake. Down, down. There. Down. Ooh, this is definitely the most dramatic bake I've ever had. No, 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 it's in color. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Time's up. Woo. Well done, bakers. Good job. I am so proud of Cam and so proud of myself. What we created was better than what we envisioned. See if I can shake my hair in here. <laughs> beautiful. I'm disappointed in both myself and Ginny. It's super ugly, but I think it's better than having no kick. Bakers.
We asked you to pair up and create a galaxy mirror glaze cake that would take us on an epic cosmic journey. Tam and Jajar, please bring us to your dessert. I'm so proud of this cake. It's beautiful, but I'm not so confident about how it's going to taste. Jajar and I made a sunburst mango mint cake. We did a red and yellow sponge with rings of dark chocolate mousse and a core with mango mint compote. Tam Dujar, two words. Showstopper. The shine. Oh, hey there. Hey there. <laughs> <laughs> your sun, your planet. The attention to detail on your chocolate work is amazing. I just hope it tastes good. So I tasted your mango and mint curd, and that was delicious. But why were you so restrained? It was like you decided to add some flavor, but you didn't fully commit. The precision of your assembly matches the precision of the exterior of the cake. In terms of the mirror glaze, absolutely perfect. Jajar and I gave them something that was incredible, and I love that feeling. Sheldon, Sabi, please bring us your dessert. Today we've made a solar flare strawberry banana cake for you. The flavors of the cake are strawberry, banana, and chocolate. There is a cookie on top and dark chocolate flames to represent the sun. As you were pouring on the mirror glaze, it felt like you had a first coat on, and then you've obviously coated it again because you can see where that second coat just sort of froze midway. But that said, the glaze is properly made. Visually, inside that cake, it looks beautiful. I got the banana flavor in there. I didn't get strawberry. The net effect of pouring so many times is that the mirror glaze stands well apart from the cake. It was peeling off. Thank, Thank you. you. Ginny and Atika, please bring us your dessert. We've made for you a melting, melting meteor white chocolate cake. The color scheme reflects the core of a meteor, and there's a fair bit of cayenne in the cake. While you did complete the challenge, I'm disappointed with your execution of the cake. There was a lack of communication, and there was frustration. And as soon as there's frustration, mistakes happen. And a mistake happened here. It looks like an asteroid hit it. I just hope it tastes really good. It looks like an asteroid hit it. I just hope it tastes really good. To be completely honest, it's an F on the design and the look, but it's an A on the texture of the cake inside. It's lovely and moist, and I got the cayenne. It looks like you used your decor to hide your issues with the thin core of the glaze because ultimately the mirror glaze was unsuccessful. It may look like a meteorite hit it, but at least it tastes good. Raphael and Latisse, please bring us your dessert. This is a mint caramel earth cake. We have a vanilla cake with chocolate chip mint buttercream and a goat chocolate ganache. I see nice gloss on the mirror glaze and some nice swirling work. I love your color palette that you chose for your cake. I do not like your color palette you chose for your planets. It blends into the cake, so it gets lost. Okay. Look at that color. Your cake was lovely and moist, but American or cupcake buttercream is better in a little package. So while we enjoyed a bite, I think a whole slice might overwhelm us with the sweetness. As a complete package, I think this is wonderful work. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm really happy that they noticed the quality of our mirror glaze. I'm feeling really confident.
you've all boldly conquered Galaxy Mirror Glaze. But the team with our favorite cake shot for the stars and it paid off. Congratulations, Tam and Jajar. I am feeling so happy. This is my redemption for being in the bottom three. Congratulations, Tam and Jajar. You've both been granted sweet safety, so please go take a seat. I feel like winning sweet safety really increases my confidence. I need to make it to the end. That's the goal. You know what that means, bakers? The rest of you must bake in the upcoming chocolate elimination challenge that will send one of you home. Bakers, we have a very special guest joining us today. Please welcome Purdy's master chocolatier, Rachel McKinley. Hi, Bakers. I am so excited to meet all of you. One of the most important parts of baking is showcasing delectable flavors. But in order to master flavors, you must also be able to recognize them. In this chocolate elimination challenge, we want you to flex your taste buds <laughs> <laughs> in a chocolatey taste off. At your stations, you will find six mystery chocolates. You must identify their flavors on your game boards. Once you feel you've correctly identified all six chocolates, call check and Rachel will come over to confirm your answers. You need to taste quickly because the faster you complete this challenge, the bigger your advantage will be. I don't know what the advantage it is, but I want it. You only have one of each chocolate, so taste wisely. Ready, steady, get your taste on! <laughs> We have six bonbons on a plate, and then we have to match the flavor magnets with the picture. Aha, uh -huh. we have more magnets than chocolates. Mmm, where would that be? This chocolate is delicious, but I have no idea what it is. Matcha, Saskatoon berry, these are flavors I'm not very familiar with. The one that stands out to me is it's mango. Mango is a very sweet fruit, so it is easy to taste. I'm tasting every single chocolate as fast as possible. Jack. Raphael. Congratulations, you have all six chocolates for us. Yes! I'm feeling amazing. I have no idea what is the advantage, but it's mine. Okay, bakers. Resume your tasting. My competitive spirit pops out of nowhere. Oh, that's easy. It's this one that's hard. Check. Jenny, I'm sorry, you're incorrect. <gasps> Shoot. Bakers, resume tasting. sure if it is grapefruit or yuzu. I know yuzu has this citrusy, florally taste, but I get confused between yellow fruits. Check. Rachel? Congratulations, you're correct. <laughs> Thank God I'm second. There are four of you left. Resume tasting. I call the judges over a second time. Congratulations, you got it right. Finally, I get it right. I see matcha and I think green tea. My chocolate has green in it. Ding, ding, ding. There we go. Check. Congratulations, you have all six correct. Thank you. <laughs> Everybody's finishing. It's just me and Sheldon. You were once teammates. Now you're going head to head. Resume tasting. This is delicious. It has this exotic, nice flavor to it. I think it's mango. Check. Sabi, congratulations. You have all six correct. This isn't my kind of game. I'm just ready to bake. Bakers, 
you've completed the great taste off, but this challenge is not over yet. All chocolate provided by Purdy's Chocolatier. Bakers, you just put your palates to the test. And now it's time to find out what you were playing for. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> These six baskets are filled with the ingredients inspired by the chocolates you just tasted. <laughs> you will each choose one of these baskets to create a scrumptious chocolate dessert. Raphael, because you finished the game first, you get first pick. I'm choosing mango. Atika. I like coffee and I drink coffee a lot. So let's play safe. Coffee cream. Ginny, it's your turn. Saskatoon Berry. Latisse. Ruby Praline. Savvy. Matcha. Sheldon, please come up. Yuzu. Bakers, for this chocolate elimination challenge, we want you to take your chosen flavor and make it the star of a delectable chocolate dessert. The pantry is full of the finest chocolates and ingredients. You'll have two hours to complete your dessert. The baker who presents us with our least favorite desserts will be going home. Ready? Steady? Get your chocolate on! Just in case I really these. Well, fellow judges, here we are. An elimination challenge, and it's all about these singular flavors that need mm. to be the star in their chocolate desserts. We're hoping to see mm. some imagination, some thinking outside the box. They make us go, ooh. That's tart. Sheldon got the yuzu, but yuzu has the same notes as orange, which a lot of these bakers are comfortable with. This is very, very aromatic. I'm going to use the zest, and I'm going to put it all throughout my dessert. For this elimination challenge, I'm making a chocolate yuzu crepe cake. I'm trying to go one extra step just to do anything I can to impress the judges. So this is my attempt at the 37-layer cake. I don't have much experience with the crepes, so I feel a little bit stressed. Mm, it smells delicious. The mango, just such a sweet light fruit, you could end up with something far too sweet if you don't handle it carefully. I do make a lot of tart, so this baser here is something that I'm used to. I am making a mango white chocolate tart. I start to make my white chocolate ganache. I want it to be very subtle because the mango is the real star. This pastry needs a lot of work. This will be the vessel for my plate and I really want it to be very beautiful. I love ruby praline. The simplicity of praline, a caramelized nut, that matching with chocolate, I yeah. think could really be magical. I am making a ruby praline dark chocolate cake, white chocolate mousse with an almond caramel filling. It's gonna be creamy, it's gonna be nutty, it's gonna be all that praline right there for you. Let's taste these. Did you see Ginny's smile? She practically ran to grab Saskatoon berries. Saskatoon berries look a lot like blueberries, and the flavor is like the gamey cousin to blueberries. I've worked with Saskatoon berries before because my family is from Western Canada. My earliest memory of actually having Saskatoon berries was camping and making Saskatoon berry jam in Winnipeg. I'm making a chocolate Saskatoon berry galette. So a galette is a very rustic pie. Doesn't need pan. I put some chopped chocolate in the bottom, kind of a surprise, and the berries on top. All of this has Saskatoons in it or will have Saskatoon berries in it. Coming into this competition, I was very confident, but after the failure in the technique test, I'm filtering to the bottom of the pack. So I know I have to bring something special to this elimination challenge because I'm not ready to go home yet. I did like the coffee cream when I tasted it. Give me a quick perk me up. 
I'm making a deconstructed coffee cream pie. Now I'm working on my ganache. I'm using instant coffee powder in my ganache. I've never done this before, but I enjoy trying new things. Two years ago, I started playing the drums. Baking isn't my only creative outlet. I drum on the side, too. Ah! Bakers! Halfway there. One hour left to go. Matcha tea has a lot of earthy flavor. I have a brilliant idea to make this matcha work. Today, I will be making a matcha chocolate opera tort. Opera cake is made up of an almond sponge, an Italian buttercream, and a chocolate ganache. The cake actually bakes pretty quickly, but the layering is super crucial. Traditionally, the coffee flavor is infused in every layer. What I'll be doing is taking out the coffee flavor and putting in the matcha flavor. More matcha. This looks amazing. I take my mini cakes and I fill those with the caramel sauce. Come on, chocolate. Let's do this. Mm, Matisse is already tempering some chocolate. I want to wow the judges. I'm hoping to make like a ruby chocolate swirls going up my dish. Bakers, you have 30 minutes left on the clock. Ooh, 30 minutes left, cutting it close. Crepes are finished. Now to get started on everything else that needs to get done. Now I'm making my Italian meringue buttercream that's also flavored with yuzu. I'm going to have a whipped chocolate ganache and a yuzu gelée. Now I'm just cutting up my gelée. This is a very labor-intensive dessert, and I'm running out of time. I feel like maybe I've bitten off more than I can chew. I'm adding mango puree to my condensed milk base. I like my dessert sweet, and I really want the judges to taste the mango. So I'm making a mango truffle. Back home in Singapore, there's this drink called Yen Yang. And that Yen Yang drink is a mix of coffee and tea. Oolong orange tea. I'm steeping oolong orange tea to make my milk chocolate oolong orange tea mousse. My mousse tastes good. Bakers, not much time left. You have 15 minutes on the clock. Also making a matcha hot chocolate. Hot chocolate is a great vessel to carry matcha because when I think of matcha, I think of tea. Just some more matcha. So I'd like to give the judges something to drink. Take my tempered chocolate out of the fridge. It's crumbling, it's stuck together. Garbage, garbage, garbage. I can't just scrap the ruby chocolate because you can't have ruby praline without ruby chocolate. All right, how am I going to get the ridiculous out of this cake? I need it as a garnish for my plating. I salvaged some of my ruby garnish over here. Five minutes to go. OK, let's picture how this is going to look. I'm hoping that today we really see Jenny step up her plating game. Plating is still my challenge. I want to make sure I make my plate the best I can make it, and it's producing a bit of anxiety. This is the part that's so hard for me. I'm cutting extremely close right now. I need to finish all of my plating. One minute left in this elimination challenge. Come on, Go on baby. One minute left, and I'm feeling overwhelmed. I have so many things to do. I'm running out of time. All I can think of is someone's going home today. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Time's up! Woo! Well done, nice work. I like the way it looks. I hope the judges notice that I am experimenting. I'm worried. I think that I need more height or some movement on the plate. Is it going to be good enough? Bakers, we asked you to create a chocolate dessert based on your flavor inspiration basket. Sheldon, please bring us your dessert. 
I really do hope the judges see the effort that I put into this cake and taste the yuzu that I put into the dessert. I have created a chocolate yuzu crepe cake with an Italian meringue buttercream that's also flavored with yuzu. This is my attempt at creating a 37 layer cake. Are you counting, Cynthia? <laughs> he lied. 36. What about the flowers? 37. <sighs> that looks good. Sheldon, that Italian buttercream is beautiful. I get hints of the yuzu, just not enough of it. But I'm glad you chose the ganache and the buttercream together because I have seen so many crepe cakes that just fall apart because the wrong filling choice. So that is a big technical check mark. Thank you. Atika, please bring us your dessert. I picked coffee cream and I have made a deconstructed coffee cream pie with coffee chocolate ganache and milk chocolate oolong orange tea mousse. There are certain words I like to use when I think about coffee. Bold, intense, but when I look at this dessert, I see something delicate and small, so I'm curious now as to how it will taste. I got very faint taste of the oolong tea. I didn't get the feeling that the coffee was the star. I'm happy that you gave yourself the challenge of a deconstructed dessert. Each of your separate elements were properly done. Your two mousses were lovely, but it's hard to get a full taste with just those tiny little hints of mousse. Thank you, chefs. I'm surprised that they don't taste the coffee because I really did put a lot in the ganache. I hope there is enough to keep me here. Savvy, please bring us your dessert. I have made a matcha chocolate opera cake with matcha hot chocolate. Shall we give it a try? Thank I'm you. I'm excited. Should. Savvy. I love matcha, and I love matcha and desserts. For me, I thought it was perfect. And it balanced very nicely with your dark chocolate. I found as I cut into it, I was getting separation of the layers too much. In terms of the hot chocolate, it's absolutely delicious. Thank you. Raphael, please bring us your dessert. So I went for the mango. And the dessert, it's a tart with a white chocolate ganache, a mango curd, and a mango brulee. You really have an eye for plating your desserts. Just that splash of mango puree, it's art. The only thing that I don't see is the use of a chocolate garnish. I just hope there's enough chocolate in the dessert. Raphael, the challenge with desserts of any type is sugar can carry flavor or it can bury flavor. And in this case, and I think it's the condensed milk, which has such an intense sweetness, overwhelms both the mango and the white chocolate. Thank you. Ginny, please bring us your dessert. I chose Saskatoon berries. I made a chocolate Saskatoon berry galette and a Saskatoon berry curd. Throughout this competition, we've had lots of conversations about presentation. I was really hoping that I could describe this plate as nice. But what I can tell you is it's wonderful. <sighs> really? You've shown restraint. You gave us space around your dessert. And you have a gift for making desserts that make people want to eat them. <sighs> Your crust was beautiful. It's flaky. It melts in my mouth. I really like Saskatoon berries. I would say that it was lacking the acidity, but I loved the chocolate base with the fruit on top. You worked through the Saskatoon berry and then the chocolate was there behind. It really took true inspiration from the fruit chocolate that you tasted. Thank you. 
They like the flavors, they appreciate the technique, and most of all, they comment on how far I've come in my plating. That's a really amazing feeling. Latisse, it's your turn. I made you a dark chocolate almond cake with a ruby praline filling topped with a white chocolate mousse. You worked so hard to temper that chocolate, and you just gave us what seemed like broken pottery pieces. All right, let's give it a taste. Mm -hmm. Latisse, you delivered us a really soft, delicate chocolate almond cake, and your white chocolate mousse was so creamy but there were just two things missing from this plate, ruby chocolate and praline, the two key flavors we needed from you. I'm very disappointed in myself right now. I probably should have stepped outside the box a little bit. This critique got me very worried. Bakers. We asked you to create a dessert based on your chosen flavor basket. When I call your name, please step forward. Sheldon. Savvy. And Ginny. The three of you had the best dessert <laughs> of this challenge. Good job. Good job. I'm in the top three, and I am happy. The best dessert of this challenge belongs to... Ginny. I'm in shock. These other bakers are so incredible, and now I'm starting to think that I actually belong here. Atika, Latisse, and Raphael, unfortunately, your desserts were not as successful. Atika, your multi-component dish pushed the flavor of coffee into the background. Latisse, your white chocolate mousse was divine. However, we were missing out on ruby chocolate and praline. Raphael, well, we commend you for taking a risk with your tart. We felt that you could have tempered the sweetness of your mango flavor. Raphael, you are safe. Thank you. Please go join the others. Atika and Latisse, that means one of you is leaving this kitchen. The baker who is going home is... Atika. Atika, you are an adventurous and experimental baker. During your time here, you challenged yourself with playful plating. We hope that your time here has inspired you to continue to bake from the heart. I came here and I learned so many things. I'm not afraid of trying new things and experimenting. I'm so proud of myself for everything that I have achieved in this competition. Next time on Great Chocolate Showdown, seven home bakers tell a story. My cake is going to be inspired by the wilderness. Trying to make a campfire. With cake decorating techniques that need a steady hand. Tell me your story. I am a trained classic musician. But baking three cakes of three hours? I've never frosted three cakes in my life. Means balance does not come easy. Oh my God. I've never had this much problem with a cake. Lord have mercy.
Dice los... Est-